Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In, where Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's expert physicians and dedicated caregivers converge to explore the dynamic intersection of technology, compassionate care, and cutting edge research to help deliver the best patient outcomes. Join us as we delve into the transformative advancements shaping the forefront of healthcare, sparking conversations that bridge innovation with patient centered excellence. From the latest healthcare innovations to new frontiers of surgical procedures and technologies, we'll cover it all. So whether you're a medical professional, science enthusiast, clinician, or just an avid podcast listener looking to expand your horizons, this podcast is for you. My name is Derek Keddington, and I will be your host for today's episode, brought to you by the Fatima bin Mubarak Center here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Before we dive in, remember, hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button, as we're here to make The Doc Is In your number one destination for healthcare podcasts. So whether you're about to buckle up for a drive, getting ready for a run, or warm up a cup of coffee, join us now as the doc is in. Here with me today is Dr. Fawad Khan. Dr. Khan is the chairman of the primary care department, a medical breast specialist, and a high-risk physician leading the hereditary high-risk and cancer survivorship programs at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Dr. Khan went through the family medicine training program at Grampian University Hospitals in the UK, after getting a medical degree from Alama Iqbal Medical College in Lahore, Pakistan. He completed his medical breast fellowship from the Cleveland Clinic Foundation with a focus on cancer genomics. And most recently, congratulations by the way, completed a certificate in clinical genetics from Harvard Medical School. Welcome Dr. Khan to the doc is in. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Good morning and thank you, Derek. So today we're here to talk about the hereditary cancers. Um, so first, can you explain to us what is what are hereditary cancer? Sure. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, hereditary cancers are cancers which occur due to abnormal genes. And they are heritable, which means that there is a risk that it can be these can be passed on from parents to children. Um, there are about 47 cancer genes that we know oh, wow. of at present. Um, and... Um, some of the, the common um, hereditary cancers which are worth mentioning, um, and it's not an exhaustive list, uh, are breast, colon, pancreatic, ovarian, and prostate cancers. Um, I would give an example of a common uh, hereditary cancer gene, uh, which is called BRCA1 or BRCA1. We've known this gene for almost 25 years now. Wow. Um, and uh, and this gene can increase the risk of multiple cancers in, a, in, a, uh, in an individual who's carrying this gene. Uh, those cancers would be uh, a very high risk of breast and ovarian cancer, uh, but also um, pancreatic, prostate, and skin cancers. So genes which can cause multiple cancers, we often um, use the term hereditary cancer syndrome because uh, it's... it's uh, putting the individual at risk of multiple cancers. Um, the other important aspect of uh, these hereditary cancer syndromes is that, uh, talking again about BRCA1 gene, uh, there is about a 50% risk uh, that this gene can be passed on from parents to children. Um, and I, I say 50% if, let's say, mother is carrying the BRCA1 gene and father is not carrying the gene then it's 50% risk for children. Okay. Uh, it will be much higher if the father is also carrying the gene. That makes sense. So how do I, how do I understand if, if I'm a, a higher risk for developing one of these hereditary cancers? I think that's a very common and relevant question for our discussion today. Um, we do recommend all of us to see our family doctors uh, to share any relevant cancer family history. Uh, but some of us will be at increased risk due to certain cancers in the family. Um, and, and uh, you know, th this is not an absolute criteria which I'm sharing, but hopefully this will help our audience uh, to, uh, you know, go see either us in the high-risk clinic or their family doctors, whatever is convenient. And, and this would, the list would include at the top any abnormal genes, or we call them genetic mutations, running in the family. Uh, or in the individuals themselves. Um, then if there are multiple cancers running um, in, in multiple generations, so for instance, if uh, breast cancer is running 
in, in the grandparents, then parents, and then the children. Again, that's the reason to uh, see if there is any uh, hereditary cancer syndrome gene in the family. Um, other reason for, uh, you know, for a uh, visit to us would be if there are cancers happening at a younger age in multiple uh, individuals in the family, or if uh, a single individual has multiple cancers, such as having breast and ovarian cancer or breast or pancreatic cancer, <clears throat> we would be thinking about the hereditary cancer syndrome gene. Um, and then um, I would say certain ethnicities um, are also at increased risk. Um, specifically, I would mention the Ashkenazi uh, Jewish ancestry. Uh, they are at, a, at an increased risk of carrying BRCA genes, both BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. And the incidence is 1 in 30 compared to 1 in 300 in general population. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. It's a huge difference. And, and we do recommend all Ashkenazi Jews to get genetic testing. Wow. So you're telling me um, every time I've moved around in the last few years, I've moved around a lot since I've been an adult. Every time I go to a primary care doctor, they ask for all my family history. Um, and then sometimes I'm calling my parents or texting my siblings, trying to understand you know, what is, you know, when did grandma pass away from cancer and what type of cancer? So what you're telling me is this really is vital information for my primary care provider, but also you as a hereditary high-risk physician to help me identify my risk for cancer. Is that right? That's true. Um, you know, uh, a more accurate family history uh, is very helpful. Um, and in that, we usually like to know what type of cancers, uh, at what age, and also if any genetic testing was done for the affected relatives. So if genetic testing is done uh, in the affected or uh, diseased relatives, it is more informative than when it's not done for the affected family members and it's done for others. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. Um, so we talked about family history for a little bit now, and you made mention that there's, you know, we can look at your risk for cancer through our relatives' history, um, but also through genetic testing. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what genetic testing is and how it can um, inform someone's risk for cancer? So genetic testing is instrumental in identifying these patients uh, uh, who are either at increased risk or not, depending on the results of the genetic testing. Uh, we carefully select patients for genetic testing based on the scientific guidelines, um, and uh, these patients are referred to our uh, brilliant genetic counselor, Dr. Rifat, who would uh, do a pre- and post-test counseling. And if uh, identified off certain uh, pathogenic genes or disease-causing genes, these patients would then be referred to the high-risk program. Um, genetic testing is uh, extremely uh, helpful because the earlier we do the genetic testing, the sooner we can uh, send these patients to the high-risk program, uh, put them on a high-risk program to reduce the risk of developing cancers and save lives. Um, it's also helpful uh, because we will then be able to do casket testing, which means doing genetic testing of the first-degree relatives of these um, genetic-carrying uh, patients or gene-carrying patients. Um, and again, if they are positive, then put them on high-risk programs. So uh, genetic testing is, is, uh, is uh, one of the most important um, ways to identify uh, high-risk patients in the population in addition to the relevant family history and personal history, of course. Great. So how do I, you mentioned the criteria for genetic testing. Um, how do I know if I meet that criteria um, or... How do I find out whether I should even look into that? Because it sounds interesting. I'd love to know if I, you know, I'm at risk for cancer, but how do I get access to that type of testing? So, um, you know, we would um, initially get uh, the patient, or let's say yourself, um, seen by one of our family doctors in the primary care, or see you in our high-risk uh, clinic. We would, um, and, and the high-risk, hereditary high-risk program, um, is essentially, uh, we are privileged to have it. It's a unique program to the region. Uh, it is led by a team of uh, experts who manage patients in a multidisciplinary uh, fashion. Um, 
and, and, and in collaboration with our Cleveland Clinic Ohio campus. Um, so um, the patients are put uh, into a uh, risk estimation uh, exercise. Uh, that these sophisticated risk estimation models uh, are, are um, you know, um, based on uh, scientific guidelines and, uh, and also along with genetic testing, um, we then are able to identify high-risk patients. These high-risk patients um, are then put on a high-risk program. It's a personalized program <clears throat> and it has four key components. Um, enhanced screening, lifestyle modifications, preventive medication and preventive surgery. Um, so talking about the, the first area, which is enhanced screening, uh, it may include, include uh, doing uh, earlier screening such as MRIs, uh, endoscopies, uh, and more frequently. So uh, it may be worth giving you an example uh, to make more sense out of this. Um, yeah, please do. You know, um, there are certain um, cancer syndromes uh, which are associated with certain genes. So for instance, if I talk about Lynch syndrome, which is uh, one of the other um, syndromes caused by a specific gene called MLH1 gene, uh, this would uh, put the individual at increased risk of colon, uh, uterine, and other cancers. So specifically talking about colon cancer screening, we would be um, doing earlier and more frequent screening colonoscopy for these patients. Um, and um, the, if we look at, we talk about, you know, certain other genes like BRCA1 gene, uh, we may need to put these patients on MRI screening program uh, as early as the age of 25 oh, for wow. women. And what's the normal screening for mammograms? Uh, so we recommend, uh, and that is now also endorsed by Department of Health guidelines uh, to start annual mammograms from the age of 40. Oh, so this um, would be 15 years earlier so if someone's identified to have um, a BRCA1 gene for that's true. mammogram. That's true, and, and it varies depending on the family history, the type of gene, uh, but for BRCA genes, it is as early as 25. Um, so that would be the enhanced screening. Uh, the second layer would be uh, lifestyle modification. Uh, there is enough uh, evidence um, that uh, improved lifestyles, uh, healthier lifestyles can reduce the risk of cancer. Um, and we are privileged to have a team of lifestyle um, um, here, which, which consists of a lifestyle physician, uh, a lifestyle coach, a nutritionist, and a psychologist uh, who help uh, these patients. Um, so. So that, that those two are as far as uh, the uh, screening and, and lifestyle is concerned. The third key area uh, which patients often don't know about are the preventive medication. Okay. Um, and um, these are medication which can reduce the risk of cancer by up to 60%. Um, there are, I'll give an example of a breast cancer gene called CHECK2 mutation which increases the risk of breast cancer and colon cancer. Uh, these patients can be uh, placed on preventive medication for a period of five years. And, uh, and we have a few patients um, on preventive medication responding very well. And, um, and, and there are uh, excellent studies um, which um, show a significant risk reduction on breast cancer. Uh, and then the fourth uh, key area would be the preventive surgery. Uh, for preventive surgery, we carefully select patients and counsel them because these patients are um, at very high risk for certain cancers. Uh, again, talking about uh, certain breast cancer genes like BRCA1, BRCA2, PALB2, uh, and other similar genes, which are, we call them highly penetrant genes. Uh, the patients have the option of risk-reducing surgery, such as uh, bilateral mastectomy. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea yeah. of uh, a very comprehensive hereditary high-risk program we have 
um, and uh, we have um, to date more than 200 high-risk patients in our program wow. and we have very uh, a few success stories as well to share. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds like it's a very comprehensive approach to helping someone understand their risk but also what their options are to hopefully present, prevent cancer in the future. We only have about two minutes left. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us an example of, of a patient that has recently gone through the program, um, and what did that look like for them? Sure, um, we've got a few stories to share, but um, I would uh, mention one recent story of uh, one of uh, the female patients who's been on our uh, high-risk program, and she has this rare mutation called TP53 gene mutation, uh, which is associated with a cancer syndrome called Lee Firmini syndrome. Um, it's um, uh, unfortunately uh, one of those genes which puts the individual at risk uh, uh, of many, for many cancers, um, starting from brain to breast, uh, gastric, colon cancers, adrenal gland cancers, uh, bone and soft tissue cancers, uh, leukemias and lymphomas, which are part of blood cancers. Um, and, and the onset of these cancers early, um, quite a few patients may develop cancers uh, in the teenage years. Um, and this patient was um, and is on our high-risk program uh, through enhanced screening, uh, where we do uh, for her uh, full-body MRI. We were able to identify a small area in her lung. Um, and, and this gene uh, rarely affects the lungs. Um, we were able to uh, share the case with uh, our lung cancer experts, um, uh, led by Dr. Ali Wala and Dr. Osman Ahmed. Uh, the patient was uh, identified and confirmed to have lung cancer. And uh, the patient underwent uh, robotic surgery. And uh, in three days time from admission, she was uh, discharged home uh, wow. safely, and, uh, and she's back on our high-risk program uh, to continue um, on the journey of uh, risk prevention. Um, um, so this is one success story that uh, I thought was worth sharing. Oh, that's great. Sounds like you really are impacting people's lives and extending them and um, making them better for them and their families. So congratulations on the great work that you do. And um, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so thank you for joining us, Dr. Khan. Um, for this episode of, of The Doc is In, um, it, what you spoke really resonated with me as you know, I look back on my family history of cancer and it sounds like I probably need to book an appointment with you. Um, and the way I can do that and any of our listeners um, would like to do that, you can go to our website at www.clevelandclinicagudabi.ae um, or you can just go down to the info on, and click on the direct link inside the episode information on the on the podcast. Um, but we're really, really grateful to have you with us today. Look forward to hearing more about the work that you do in the Hereditary High Risk Program. Um, it's my pleasure. And thank you for joining us for this episode. And thank you for joining us on this episode of The Doc Is In. Take care and stay healthy. <laughs>